would you rather be rich and in an unhappy marriage the most common one or poor in a happy marriage i genuinely want to know give me thought. rich and unhappy See, give me rich we are going in an unhappy life. marriage these, any day these are the people who are going fine life if i could okay. have a little mm. bit of last born okay selfishness in Valid. Valid. i feel Same, like yeah. i would have served myself a lot of hurt a lot of nonsense and a lot of things that i cannot explain well well and you know, when a child grows up in, in poverty, they, they end up resenting their parents. Ask me, I know. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. You never cease to amaze. What's going on, guys? It's Adi, aka Kai. Hello, hello, hi, it's your girl, mommy, dearest, and welcome to Thought Digest with Kaya and Umpowe. We amplify conversations one thought at a time. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Another week, another banger. Another week, another banger. I yes. hope you guys enjoyed last week's video. Yes. If you haven't intro. watched last week's video, go and watch it. Yeah, you can't watch this one because you're going to be there. referencing what we spoke about. Like, exactly. Imagine I'm, like, up. imagine I'm like, oh, but remember when I said this last exactly. week? And, then you and you're lost. And you lost. Come you don't want to be lost. So before you continue this one, actually, I can't say this by saying, but some, should they start here and then go there? No, pause this one. <laughs> go there and, and then, then come, come back. back. There's enough time. <laughs> There's enough time. It's a Monday afternoon. You don't, have, you don't have any plans. Please. That is so true. If you have plans on a Monday, that is very... Change your life. Concerned. <laughs> very concerned. I'd be a concerned citizen. I'd also be very concerned. But like, anyways, how was your week this week? Man, okay. Um, A lot less exhausting than last week was. Yeah. I remember last week I was as humble. But this week it's better. I think I'm getting into the swing of being of having something to do every day, which is not something I'm used to. So um, I think I'm even I'm even raw dogging life, bro. I'm raw. Can you imagine? When I'm sober, I've been sober every day of this week. That is crazy. Yes. That is crazy. That I, I don't think I'd be able to do that. Oh no, <laughs> I've been doing that all my life. I'm trying to survive. Yeah, yeah I'm just trying to survive. Yo, this week has been hell, guys. Like, as you can see, like, it's hell. Like, I look like my problems. No, like, no. literally, like, it's but only... But your nose is actually a little bit pink. Bruh, like, I literally Aww. look like my problems. Like, I have flu, genali fever. Allergies. I have, like, my allergies are s literally flaring up. So, if somewhere in this video, my lips are the size of a watermelon, just... Just ignore just it. Just ignore Pay it. attention to what's coming out exactly. of the Exactly. Just ignore. There. But otherwise, besides um, uh, things, me physically not being well, Yeah. Um, emotionally, I've been good. Okay. Mentally, That's I've been good. good. News. Yeah. That's good news. Emotionally, I've been out of touch. I can't lie. I haven't had time to register where I'm at emotionally. That's crazy. I think I've, like uh, we said on Tato's, uh, Tato and Lebu's podcast mm -hmm. that... I mentioned I was like I feel dead I feel very numb mm -hmm. um, maybe that's something I need to sit down and actually revisit I think mm -hmm. journaling is a, is a good habit that it is. I should take out because it, it allows you to just you know actually process because you think yeah. you think if you might think it's like a feeling of like numbness yeah but there might be an underlying emotion yeah. there and then you're just numbing journaling. that emotion yeah. so I think journaling is a, is a good yeah. is a good way uh, for me I cry I cry. You cry, baby. I'm a cry baby. I cry every single time I like feel like stressed, worried, or everything. And in my tears, yeah. I get the answers. Really? Like in my tears, I find comfort. How blessed are you? Bruh, like I'll cry, and I'm just like so. Like the now I was crying because I was yeah. sick. Yeah. God was like, I'll give you strength. Yeah. To wake up and go to Thank work. God. You know, like you know things like that. So you just gotta like, thank. So you a softy, softy. Bruh, I'm such a softy. I'm a hard nigga, bro. Like, you ain't I'm never gonna catch me crying. So I'll wipe and go. We, I'm just a steamer. Like, I'm just doing too much. Steamer, I'm buka all of it. I'm a joke. As soon as there's a tear, I'm like the audacity of my emotions to Where come is this through my eyes. From? I'm a hard nigga. Like, but I cry at the dumbest things. Like the dumb. Okay, no, I think even it's, when you're not on your period. No, I think it's because like I'm literally like supposed to start my period soon. Oh, so okay. like lately I've been hyper emotional. Yeah. Like I'm watching like a, a freaking show. It's like a Survivor type show. Yeah. And I'm literally crying every time my family wins. Like every time someone is winning, I'm crying and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me when this 
phase is over and this part of the month is over Bruh. then we can watch something together because, because like, otherwise I'm i'll cry so like annoyed. every second every second i'll be like crying i'm not interested i'm not interested oh bad at school how's that going oh guys i'm not surviving this week yeah because like literally because of like the Wait, it's the first week of march yeah but I'm only writing assessments in April. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm luckily I'm not writing assessments now. Um, but the reason why I'm not coping school wise this yeah. week is because I haven't been physically well. Oh, so I see, so I see. like it's hard to concentrate on yeah. like your books and everything yeah. when you're not physically well. Yeah, right. You know, like coming to work, you can show up to work when you're not well. But like, guys, try doing texts and being sick. I, I don't want to know what that's like. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you feel like taking your papers and like shredding them to pieces because you're just so frustrated. So I haven't like touched a book this week and it's Thursday, which is so insane to me. Pray for me, guys. We are Pray praying. <laughs> Pray Hectic for me. business. But when I, this week you said that you've been handling things at the work. Yeah, I, I got a PA because I realized it's a lot. Let me just hand it off to somebody and say, me, so me, me, nice. me, 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 me. You, you do the scheduling. You deal with this. You, you deal, deal with, with the admin. Deal with it. I saw you went on a trip. Yeah. What was that trip Oh, about? yeah. How can I forget? I was, How can you I was in Mozambique. It's partially why I don't have a full face beat. All my stuff is still in Mozambique, bro. So what happened was um, it was my friend's grandmother's 84th birthday. Mm -hmm. And in Mars, like... Family is a massive deal. So when it's a birthday party, like, we go, we will drive to Mars. So that's what I was there for. And then um, it was a very last, the return was very last minute. Mm -hmm. Because they said, either you stay here in Mars and come back alone later in the week. Or you go with us now, but you're going to have to leave your bags. Because the bags were about an hour away from where we were. And I was like, <laughs> and I'll leave my bags. My bags will come two days after. It's been four days. That's I ain't got crazy. no toiletries. <laughs> I'm still my dad's. I ain't got no makeup. I ain't got no wardrobe. Well, some some part of my wardrobe. But I was I was in Mars. It was lovely. Um, How was the weather there? Is it uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Is it hot? What? I what? It's like the sun country. resides in Mozambique, bro. Like yeah, on Tuesday, it was about forty-two degrees. That sounds like Venda. It's giving Venda. There's no such thing as a hot shower in Mars. You're a liar if you're having a hot shower in Mars. Lotion? Lotion? It's Lotion gonna melt you can, off. You can it's a luxury. Like, makeup? It's a luxury. Like, what, you, took make, you took makeup for what? So uh, I lied to myself. Like, I just did my brows, did a little bit of mascara. mascara and you're like, Dude. And I was like, yeah, this is my makeup look. Mars is extremely hot. But what I will say about Mozambique is that it's a beautiful, it's a wonderful country with beautiful people. They're all very welcoming, very friendly, very loving, again, family oriented. Mm -hmm. And yes, there was like a massive language barrier. There always what is. Do they speak in Portuguese. Oh. Yeah. So I understand a little bit, but not enough to carry a whole conversation. But they're so great. They're such awesome people mm -hmm. that they also meet you halfway. That is so Even though their English is cr as crazy as your Portuguese is, you will, they will find a way to communicate Somehow with you. Somehow you will talk. Somehow you will talk. That, I feel like that's the beauty of being African. Nah? Like, minus us fighting there on the Twitter streets uh, yeah. and the TikTok comments. Yeah. I think our humanity in Ubuntu is beyond anything. Beyond. It's beyond, beyond. anything. Because that's why for me, like, I, it's, it's so hard to think of, like, leaving africa and like permanently residing in any european Bro. or american country because i'm like you i won't, won't get, get the same yeah. i get in yeah. africa it's it's an african thing and i love my people we love our black people. is beautiful i'm happy to be black we love our very people. happy to be black speaking of wena and your makeup that you left in mozambique the <laughs> dude you know every time you go speaking of my heart starts <laughs> to like, beat at a thousand yeah, like, what did, what did, like what what, did, what is she about to say <laughs> yes no man i was just i was just leading us into our next topic uh-huh okay ne? leading us Inside. into our topic yeah. of today so today we'll be covering two topics we'll be talking about maintenance um which is maintenance give maintenance early maintenance exactly and then we'll also the long topic today our discussion today is body dysmorphia 
Yeah, so very very feminine conversations we're having today. Yeah. But I think stay tuned because stay I think tuned. also men can experience body dysmorphia. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Men don't have maintenance like that, like that. If you have a girlfriend, your maintenance ain't that. Uh, but I feel like they should know. Like nah? a, a guy should know. You should know the prices of these things, starting with nails, like lawa ne. How much? Ita wa tawa five. But she has little. Bow. And then hundred rand per bow. Hundred for the niggas. Bow. For the niggas. Oh. Yo, I was so concerned. I was like, 2K. Yeah, 2K if you want to pay for my like, nails. Like, guys, if you're watching this, uh, Kaya's nails cost 2K. Yes. For the ladies, we'll tell you guys. For the ladies, the just price. call me. Just, <laughs> yeah, just we'll DM me. The price. No, yeah, the 2K insane. is the real price. The real price is 2K. Yes. Uh, ladies, DM if you yes. want to know where she got them done. Yes. Yes. That's the code. That's the code. But okay, with the maintenance, I'm basically going to be asking you a few questions with regards to your maintenance. And I'll also respond with regards to mine. So the first thing, I wanted us to go from top to bottom, you know. So with regards to like your hair, do you prefer wigs or braids and why? I'm definitely a braids girly. Um, cause I realized that wigs are high maintenance guys. You're installing that thing twice a week, like three times. Even you're sitting in front of the mirror, you're gluing it down. Like shout out to the wig girlies. You guys, eh. Yeah, they, 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 they thriving. <laughs> they are survivors. You guys are spawning. Wigs are high maintenance. Also, even beyond being high maintenance, I can get an installation every yes, week if yes. I wanted to. Um, I just don't feel beautiful in in mm. wigs i don't feel because mm. i i love myself when i'm most natural mm-hmm. or expressing african beauty mm-hmm. so that's when i feel like yo i'm eating because i've been in a wig a couple of times and i just didn't and feel you like do, me you don't feel like yeah yeah and i feel like i feel like that goes into like your type of like your facial features yeah. and like what your face portrays like yeah. it can tell you like what type of hairstyles you should carry you can yeah. carry like you are more like is like you know like that soft feminine yeah. African yeah. like beauty. That's I can't, like I can't that's that's the type of energy you bring. So I I'm being so romantic. I'm, I like I'm it. I'm trying to teach your man how to compliment <laughs> you. Yeah, uh, you see that one. <laughs> he force feeds me compliments. Like he's I like, cannot. Take them. I cannot forget how he's beautiful like, I am. He's like take man. take them. Yeah. So yeah. like. So I get you like preferring braids because yeah. you do. I think if I were to wear a wig, it would probably be like a kinky curly wig, something that looks mm, like natural hair. That takes hair. you back to that yeah. uh, aspect. And it must be clueless. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, three hours, like three we, hours. What? Oh, bruh, they pluck the wig, they bleach but like, it, but, they but put it on the have, head. You don't have to be there for they that glue, process. They glue it. Then they put a band around, you don't and then they hot comb it, and then sometimes they want to curl it, and then you take the band off, and you put a little gel. You put, oh, I watched a wig installation. That thing took two hours. I think it's because you you watched like the pre prep and the wig installation, because I think a wig installation could be like an hour, and then like maybe wig prep understandable, yeah. but you don't have to be there. You can literally send your wig to be prepped like before you get. To the salon and you just come and you, you, you install. I feel like we're not okay, but you've installed hair before. Yes, and for me, between braids and wigs, yeah. it's hard to choose. Um, but I'm starting to love wigs more. Really? Mm. Okay. But like, I don't put them on, and it's because of like the and like you know the fact that I have to go get my cornrows somewhere else first, and then after getting my cornrows, then I must now go and yeah. take my wig to be. Yeah. Pre prep first and then go and then so install it. I want to learn how to like install it yourself. my own wigs. And that I think that's my goal for this year. Yeah, actually take us on that journey. I yeah, like that. I'll literally take you guys on that journey yeah. of installing my own wigs. Okay. Because I'm thinking I'm thinking I genuinely find myself to be beautiful in a wig. Mm-hmm. But I'm also really pretty in braids. I just it's pretty a, either way. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just a girl. Yeah, like, you're I'm just, just a girl. I'm just a girl. You guys tell us what you prefer, yeah. wigs or braids. Comment down below the real time for uh, installation. I don't believe I think it's an days. hour. Look like, when I was going, when I was going, I took like an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> took, like, I don't hour. trust the official information. Comment I, down below. I took it out. And also, it's like, also the style. It depends. It's like with braids. It yeah. depends on like the type of braids you're doing. It right. depends on the style. So I don't, like, I tried like doing styles and stuff like that, but I feel like it makes me look cheap. Mm. So like with the wig, 
the clean look is where I eat. Mm. I, I think eat. I think those those extravagant wig yeah. hairstyles are for a particular day, particular yes, not, outfit, not a, bro. Not a, not a day not to on day. a regular Imagine, Wednesday. Bra, you've got Marilyn Monroe, bra, like you have like that on. pondo here. You know the ones they love the pondo here and stuff. I did that yeah. once, and the Never the massive edges. I hold mm. on, <laughs> like oh, edges for me. I don't like them on the way. Like don't really? give me edges. Do not give me edges. Who do you think? Who do you think has the best wig game in Sada? In this like, country, which influences like killing the wig game. Damn, that's a good question. There is, I don't know her name, but like she's on TikTok. She installs wigs. Yeah. On TikTok, she's light skinned. I think caramel. She light-skinned. she does she like she does, has these eyes. Yes. Kinda, oh, like, that you, gorgeous girl. I think she also does like skin makeup. Yeah, as well, yeah. On top of that content. You, you, guys, you need to know her. Yo, guys, please. if you know and who we're talking about, please. Yeah, or comments. She she has like. These, these, how do you describe these eyes? China eyes. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, how else? Like, <laughs> but like, she has like those, like, almond. Is it almond? I don't know. Anna has guys, but like, know, these, but these eyes, like eyes this, that are kind of stretched really out. She's really pretty. Like and yeah, stunning. She, her wig game is Crazy. the one. It's Crazy. the one. Her wig game is the one. Uh, yeah, for me, that's yeah. the number. Who do you think? For I'm you? not, I'm not clued up with wigs. I just see her on my for you page sometimes. Oh, and, and, like, and you agree. You are delicious. You yes. look delicious. I mean, okay, I would be 100%. <laughs> Let me see. Let's go to the next one. Uh, ooh, this is a question, uh, with regards to hair. Mm. Do you think that the prices that are currently in the market are reasonable and fair? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm. Nutless braids are unreasonably expensive, yes. bro. How are you charging me for yes. something that's by waist length, normal pencil with 1.2? Like literally. 1.2 for braids that are going to last me three weeks. And then I'm going to have to retwist them myself. Exactly. And overdo the edges to make it look new. Exactly. Nah, fam. And you can buy a wig with that money too. That is the that is the crazy part. A wig that will last you like a longer time yeah. than those three week braids. And nah, someone once said, someone once said on TikTok that the reason why the braid prices are like up now is because of like America. So in America, they charge oh, them, yeah. they charge each other crazy prices yeah. there in America for doing hair. Yeah. Like you will hear like a braids six hundred dollars. Do you know yeah. what six hundred dollars are in rent? <laughs> that is mad. That's like twelve thousand rand. That is mad. So they charge. Oh, hey. They charge crazy as prices. As good, as good in Japan. In America, they go to the most. Apparently, you must pay a deposit before you go to the yeah, salon. Yeah, I saw because, that. Uh, non-refundable deposit. If you miss your appointment, you don't get your deposit back. Do you know how up will be if we just go learn how to do it and go do it in America? But if, if all, like, literally, if all the ladies here in, in SA who are out here doing the most with braids literally went to America, yeah. they would be rich. And they, they just bump so- the price down. As That's per the, the competition, just bump it down a hundred dollars. I'm telling you. Yo, yes, so uh, So because of like the American prices, yeah, South African hairstylists think it's okay for them to charge those prices. Well, yeah, we will, we will, ha- we will happily. What is it called when you when you force somebody out of business? We will happily stop going. What is it? Stop what going. is it? Boycotts. We will happily boycott you. One thou. For nutless braids. But I try to negotiate. Like, I'm always a negotiator yeah. when it comes to braids. Because I always feel like there's always room for negotiation. Yeah. You know, like, that's how it is. Like, it's bargain and stuff like that. Because there's no... You don't have, like, a clear price. Yeah. Even you, you know? You can... I think based on, like, how much I'm willing to pay, even decide the type of hairpiece you use. Yeah. Whether you're going to use one million or expression. expression. Based on, like, yeah. how much I'm willing to pay, yeah. you know? So I try to negotiate as much as I can. And then I'm also, I've tipped hairstylists before. You got money, man. No, it's not that I've got money, money. You got like, money, man. I never heard nobody say they've been tipping hairstylists. But see, now we just pay and, and we're you, going. And you got, and you got tip me, you. It genuinely, like, You're taking my money already. It genuinely depends. Like sometimes because I've had such bad hair experiences lately. Right. Like that, like when I get good hair experiences, I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And I'm like, you mm. are, you thank you, Lord. And then I'm just like, God, here's this 50 rand. You're onto something. Because I've had so many. Because I once went to a salon in the you mall and I asked for red braids with like a red hair. So basically my hair was supposed to be dyed red yeah. and then I was supposed to have red braids. Yeah. Did I not come out with Maroon. orange hair? Number one, my hair was orange. 
if you can still see, I think somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. You oh, can still I see can the see, color. I can see it. But my hair was orange and my braids were blonde. They did you so dirty. <laughs> that was a horror story. <laughs> I will insert no, um, a picture. They will insert a picture. I'll send. They must insert a picture. I cried. Like, I literally was bawling, like, bawling real tears. Then, like, are you the type to keep quiet in the salon when they do it dirty? But, you don't even want to know. If I saw my hair was orange, I was like, stop the show, stop the pass. I pay. I pay. You still paid. But listen, I even did my nails at that salon. My nails literally <laughs> look like somebody chewed gum and literally no. pressed it on my nails. You let them scare me, friend. I can't lie. It was a salon in the mall. And you know what? My God did the most, hey? My God saw that my tears. Because, like, literally one month later, that salon closed down. So Amen. Like, oh, my God. I'm joking. So my Amen tears. to somebody's bread being cut off. Oh, bro, what they did to my hair. Yo, I was crying. Yo, I cried. Your hair versus bread. Bro, my I don't ex, know. I don't my know. My ex drove from wherever he was. He came to the salon because I was crying. Like, I was crying. You and still... they charged me 1.8. <laughs> 1.8 for orange hair when I asked for red. <laughs> oh, guys. So I don't know if you guys are noticing red. a trend, but mommy is the, the traumatized one between the two. Every episode, only trauma. I have trauma. I have so much You trauma. still paid. I would have and never. Bl- I'm blasting your thing on Instagram. I'm blasting your salon on TikTok. We would have blasted it now, but it's closed. You see? <laughs> We have been blasting it, but it's gone. You see, your hair is orange. You still let them braid you. Nah, you know what? Actually, let's stop treating you like the victim. (laughs) I'm the problem. You still went to be your nails. I am the problem. No, the thing is... I don't feel sorry for you There was a lot going on. Like, they did my nails while they were dyeing my hair, right? So my nails finished, and then my hair is orange. And I'm like, I can't leave the saloon (laughs) with orange hair like what am i gonna do with Dude, myself and you would look so funny exactly. with orange hair because you're so I light looked like an <laughs> Oompa Loompa. do you know Ch- uh, charlie and the chocolate factory the Oompa Loompas? <laughs> i looked like those Oompa Loompas. yo i'm imagining you with orange hair dark but, nah. like i don't even want to send y'all the pictures no more <laughs> because y'all would lo- you i'd be a meme i'd yo, be a meme i literally nah, looked like goku like it was like shh, and it was orange so yeah, so yeah, number one, their prices are unreasonable. Two guys do better. Oh, do better guys in salon. Also, guys a uh, moral of the story, stand up for yourself in the salon. No, 100%. when you see they're doing mawazas, like you have to 100%. use the last of your courage to say that this is not what I wanted. Because you're gonna go home and cry, cry. And you're gonna look at your nails and cry. I'm very I will direct you while you're doing my hair. If I Think you're doing my wazas i'm gonna tell you you're doing my wazas i literally wazas. have a friend like that that girl literally made them like undo the same line like three yes, times yes undo it remove the nail we'll do a soak off if we must and start again that's i have a friend who's like that she literally went home she she made them unbraid like three times she's like you know what they they finished she went home she she's like i looked at myself in the mirror i was like nah she went back the next morning she's like undo my hair and start again as you should. When you're providing a service, I think you must... The, 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 okay, the customer is not always right. But, but when you're providing a service, I think you must you must be willing to adhere to the, to the customer's, you, you, you know, do um, what the request. customer wants you to do. Yes. Because it's not like we get there and say, do me this, and we don't ask, can you do it? Ha! Huh, there's nothing more frustrating than somebody saying they can do it. <laughs> and then, they like, can't. You can see by the first braid, it be la- that's how it shoo- is. Coo- 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 coo. That's how it is with nails, with braids. Yo, guys, your nails, the nail trauma, yeah. nail game, guys, nail trauma is real. I, I will never cheat on my nail tech. Understandably so. Please show them your nails again. Oh, I can't like remember. understandably so. They're so cute, guys. They're very like, extra, very like, extra. Me, I'm They're ghetto fabulous cute. right now. I'm <laughs> in my ghetto fabulous. <laughs> I'm supposed to soak them. <laughs> You're ending me right now. The salon was casting me. No, please send me the address of your nail tech. I must visit her. I'll give you. I must visit her. Shame because no, I'm sorry. Even the lady who does my so that you never come with orange hair on this podcast. We will we will reschedule. (laughs) 
Well, I'll give you a head wrap. Like, so, nails, uh, in a way. Oh, guys, just Like, I have the worst luck. I have the worst of luck. Um, do you, have you ever done individual lashes? Yeah, I have. My my lashes are very fragile, so mm-hmm. when those individual lashes were coming off, they would come off with my real lashes. Mm-hmm. So I just decided it's not not for me. It's not to not do them anymore. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, I have a love and hate relationship with individual lashes. Mm. Sometimes I look really cute. Sometimes I look like I'm mm-hmm. drunk. I individuals. Yes. Uh, last episode, I had individuals. I really? Think, yeah. I thought that was mascara, I can't lie. That is like the natural type. Uh, That's the one where it's like it's cute because you don't know. You know, uh-huh. you like, like I think mm. you should stick to those. Those look nice. Mm, they yeah. were really nice. So it was like I never really found my style mm-hmm. of individual lashes. And also this thing of guys, don't go to the salon. You know, sometimes you need to as with anything, with lashes, with your hair and everything like that. Sometimes you have to look at yourself and look at the person who you are using as an example. Are your heads the same? Yes or no? If they are not, now you need to consider how will it look <laughs> on your head? I didn't expect this maintenance conversation to dust me like this. No, but, but like seriously, because now you'll be angry at um, um, Mama Bantu when she did what she, uh, when you, what she asked her to do. But the problem is your head, when I, you have a five head and the example had a four head. So you need to, you need to, you need to look, you need to make sure you know, so like you're right though, I can't lie. Exactly. You, you can't mean, go you can't go with small eyes asking for volume exactly, lashes. Exactly, like, you're gonna look on, you're gonna bro. look like you high. You're gonna like come out like this the whole time, like we can't even see you. And they're gonna be so heavy for your eyes yeah. that it's gonna affect your eyesight. Like literally you, you, make, like, you make valid points. I just you're gonna be like I just didn't see that one coming through. So me. like that was my problem. Like I'm li- everything guys, it's from experience. Mm. So I went there with these people who have like nice eyes, example, and me, my eyes are like these small round things. And I was like, please do me these. And the lady did me what I asked her to do me, but it didn't look the same because of the shape of my eyes. So you need to change the people you go. Like, actually, you need to change. At this point, nobody else is a problem. I need to change. uh, My lash touch is the one. Nails. You just seeing dust everywhere. The only thing that's consistent, my lash touch is the one. She Uh does the things. It's just that before, Uh I didn't know that which lashes, which style suited my eyes. Mm -hmm. Now Mm -hmm. I know. Now she will never let me down. Okay. With hair, I am still on the hunt. With but your hair looks beautiful. I did it at my lash technician salon. And now you learned most. Like she, like that lady. You know, I feel like a hairstylist needs to care about you. Right. They like nail tech. Everybody, they need to care about you. Yeah. You're, the quality of your service is dependent on whether they care yes. about you. If you're rude, I'm ah, telling you, you will see rude stuff on your head. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's gonna be rude. Like you will feel rare. Fighting. I didn't know you had a sense of humor. I have a sense of humor. Guys, I'm not funny. I didn't know you could be this funny. I'm not funny. Is everything okay? I'm not funny. I'm comfortable. I'm not funny. I'm, not I'm funny. even wondering. I have not landed a single joke this entire episode. It's just mommy. Ba, 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 ba. Bar after bar after bar after bar. It's okay. I don't Start think your I'm comedic funny. career. It's all right. It's name. Uh, I, I can thrive, ne? Comedy Central, here it's I so come. so annoying. You're actually really... <laughs> <laughs> Comedy Central. Waxing? Have you ever waxed? I, I haven't. Mm. But I want to. Uh, but where? I want to wax... Like, for me, I want to wax my underarms. Because mm-hmm. I feel like... My hair would be gone for longer. Yeah, apparently it thins out the hair. It thins it out... Yeah. Apparently, it's also good if you have, like, um, you know, like, sometimes shaving can cause, like, lumps. Razor and, bumps, yeah. And things like that. So, like, it, it's good for that. on ingrowns as yeah. well. It, it lessens the amount of ingrowns you yeah. have and stuff like that. So, I genuinely want to go and wax. I want to wax everywhere. I'm generally just a very hairy girl. And you just want to... I'm not going to wax my arms, though. That's so ridiculous. And not my back. But my legs, my underarms, and my bikini area. Okay. I think we should... Ooh. We should we should plan Let's that date. It. Let's do it. We should plan that Stay date. Tuned. Stay tuned. That is gonna be definitely yeah. we're gonna vlog that day. Yeah. Waxing. But you also have to wax your bikini area. Yeah, like I'm gonna I'm wax everywhere. Like okay. you. Okay. Wherever you wax, I'm gonna wax. Ah, say less. We need to th- we need to 
Tell us. We have so many appointments. Remember, we have a doctor's appointment. Yeah. Now we have a waxing appointment. Yeah. Guys, please keep us accountable for yeah. these appointments. Please do. Keep us accountable for these appointments. Make sure we see it through, guys. We see it through, my boy. And then with regards to maintenance, for me, the last thing is these IV drip thingies. I've never actually, like, clued myself up on that, eh? What's all that about? Vitamins? Yes, apparently it gives you what your body needs. I guess. Like Why can't I just thing. eat a fruit? There's that. Or eat fruits uh, and veggies. I think maybe they say it goes past time to the system because yeah, it's already in the I'm food very form. skeptical of these artificial I think the ways of why, making yourself healthy. The only reason why I wouldn't do like IV drips yeah. is because of like I have like a big, big phobia of needles. Your like wuss. it's like yeah. So when you give birth, you're not gonna get an epidural. Have you seen the needle nah. they give an epidural nah. with? Nah, that thing that goes like up your spine. Nah, that thing that's like this. <laughs> so you're tugging out your your like labor. Like this, hey guys, I'm natural. I'll naturally. That thing like you know it can cause you to have back pains for the rest of your life. Oh my gosh, Ish. but uh, this is the problem with people who have fears. They always look at the side effects <laughs> and the negative. Hey. It must always be scary. Until, until it kills Arr, you. Can't walk. Arr, Arr, until it kills you. Like, hold on. Wait a minute. Just say you're scared of the needle. Don't make us who are going to get that epidural. That th- give, give me, me the, the epidural. epidural. <laughs> I'm, you're not going to waste time. I'm the, not going to waste time. The moment you arrive, you're like, give it to me. Play this clip back in five years and let's see if she actually did take the epidural or not. I probably wouldn't have. I'm a survivor. We'll see. I'm not going to kill we'll see. <laughs> Please, okay. T- to anyone who's watching this who has given birth, um, if you use an epidural, please share your experience. Yeah, yeah maybe like it'll take away my fears. If you didn't, share your experience. Maybe it'll keep me fast and steady. It like I'm not taking an epidural. My mother said that she went, she was like, it was natural births. Who? My mom. Uh-huh. She's like natural births. She didn't, she just gets she, my mom, she's like, she gets to the hospital, she's like, push the babies out. She doesn't know what it is to sit in the hospital. Your mom is what, what we call in the end, yeah? A vundra. Like she's like, That's she's, what we she's call a that person. Like a vundra. If you know, you know, from the east side, you know what a vundra is. She just, she's like, she got there, she was like, <laughs> and the babies were, just came out. And I was like, oh, she mom. must give me the same gift. So, let's get into our game. So, it's today's game, what we are watching is, what are you what are you watching? watching? watching. What you do you want to go back to watching your series so bad? Yo, Not bro. right now. I can think of this anime. Not right now. Forget about the anime. <laughs> what we are playing yeah. is Would You Rather. Would You Rather. Is it a positive or negative edition? It's a positive edition. Okay. But like it depends what's your idea of positive. Okay. So the first one is Would You Rather Date a YouTuber or a Rapper? Very controversial. Why would you do you rather meet this you? It's like that they got a you day today. <laughs> yeah, no, I get I'll answer from my experience. I'll answer from my experience. A YouTuber who was a rapper also. <laughs> That's crazy. So I've dated a YouTuber and a rapper. Would I date a YouTuber or a rapper? Hey, a Jehovah Jaira, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sham. Uh, uh, but YouTubers be living like rappers, if we're being honest. No, but like, who would you rather? Do you do you give want me the YouTuber, man? bruh? Oh. Just give. It was the safe option. <laughs> what rappers? Because now, like, someone would be like, "Oh, which rappers? Which rappers are you busy with? Which rappers nah, would you rather nah. date?" Let's stick to the YouTube. <laughs> which rappers would you rather date? For me, I'd rather date. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's actually tricky. Mm-hmm. I'd rather date a rapper. This is why. Okay. You like to shake the internet, brah. No. Like you like to take a take inside the internet, I'm not bro. Like, no, listen, the reason why I'd rather date a rapper over a YouTuber is because, um, I don't know, I've never. T- <laughs> A real rapper. I've never dated. Oh damn, that's you, deep. You, you, you're <laughs> shaking it again. <laughs> I've never dated 
someone whose main line of yo, business yo, yo, yo. is rapping. And I have like, I think I have crushes on rappers right now. Who's your crush? No, it's not. It really isn't. It really isn't. In, our, South indif- African. in our industry, it isn't. South, South Af- African. The South African entertainment industry is so small, guys. I'll be talking about the nigga tomorrow. He's South African, your crush. He could be here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'd rather date a rapper because I currently much. like a rapper, a South African rapper. If you want to know who is he it Casper? Is, no. Is it one of the major Steve boys? No. Is it Lucas? No. Damn, it's Lucas. It's not Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Lucas. It's Lucas. It's not hey, Lucas, Lucas <laughs> from Thought Digest with Kaya and It's not Lucas. It's not Lucas. Slide. It's Thank not. you. It's not. It's not. say my no like that yeah she hasn't guessed him yet so it means he's still safe from the eyes of pride people definitely lucas man let's move on (laughs) (laughs) let's move on okay the next would you rather question is would you rather be a firstborn or a lastborn Hey, give me last born, yeah. Any last day. born treatment. Any they day. they live soft. Any All day. they have to do is any and they have what day. they want. I would rather be a last born any day. <laughs> and last bonds have they are the most self absorbed people. My guy, the and world revolves around the last born. And I love it for them. I love it for them. Now I'm talking about self absorbed guys. Like you know, in life, like I feel like as a first Who born. Who are you? Yo, I. I experience different versions of you every week. No, no, listen, listen, listen. As of, I've been a firstborn all my life. For like since I was four, yeah. I've been a firstborn. Yeah. And I've had to be anything but selfish. Soft, yeah, and selfish. I always had to be selfless. Okay. Like my whole I see life. You're and that's person. always translated now into my friendships and also into relationships. Okay. That's how I've allowed certain things in friendships and okay. I've allowed certain things in relationships because it's in my nature to be selfless. To be selfless. I see. So if I could okay. have a little Valid. bit of last born okay. selfishness Valid. in me, Valid. I feel Same, like yeah. I would have served myself a lot of hurt, a lot of nonsense, and a lot of things that I cannot explain. Well. Well. See, so yeah, so I would rather be a last born. Okay, I agree. I'd also rather be a last born, even though you guys are just. But you, you see, I want to be. But I'd, I'd rather be this than, be than the deputy person who's, who's, who's receiving the. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, the last one is Would you rather be rich and in an unhappy marriage? The most common one. Or poor in a happy marriage. I genuinely want to know. Give me rich and unhappy. See, Give me rich we are going in an unhappy life. marriage these, any day. These are the people who are going far in life. These are the people who will go far. These are the women. <laughs> Yo, who build my kids oh, won't eat happiness. Bruh, these are the women who. My build kids won't kids. learn. They won't be educated by happiness. That is so true. My kids won't wear happiness. That is so I true. I beg. They will not go to happiness university. My God. Happiness primary. Happiness ha- nappies. <laughs> happiness meals. <laughs> Bruh. So, someone was saying they spend minimum 7K per month on a child. So imagine you are broke. And you know, when a child grows up in, in poverty, they, <gasps> they end up resenting their parents. Ask me. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm boop, just kidding. The I'm, whole episode of Jim, I mean, this is just been just pulling out the blicky, it's, bro. It's the flu. It's the flu. It's the flu. It's really the flu. Yeah, it's never you. Yeah, it's the flu. Is that a joke or are you being serious? No, shame. Uh, oh. I don't, I do not not resent my parents. Yeah. But you always have a sense of envy for plant kids. Mm. You know, like I don't know about plenty. They have like they have different experiences in life than those who are unplanned. 
for me, like, I seeing plant kids, you see them, their parents drop them off in uni, first mm. day of school. You see them, the parents come, they're dropping off their kids. Mm. You can see they came, they come with groceries and everything like that so that Umtanabo survives the mat. Then you see them there at Campus Square, Mr. Mm. Price home, they're buying essentials and da 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 da. Mm. Us unplanned kids, we navigate that on your own. Crazy. You navigate that on your own. Yeah. Like, I've seen the the biggest difference between a planned child and an unplanned child in varsity. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, some are well to be planned. Mm. Some are well to have been planned. That got deep. Like, literally. So, for yeah. me, yeah, shame. Yeah, rich and happy. For the sake of my kids. Let for the them, sake of your kids. Let them be happy. Now you're making me wonder, was I planned or unplanned? I I think I was I was a we'll see as we go baby. We'll see as we go. Yeah, I don't think I was one or the other. I think it was just I like, will do. It. She's already here. Hey man, I <laughs> so it's like let's do the best that we can. It's the same. It's like oh she's here. Yeah. Ta-da. But that's the thing. Like when you are like unplanned man, hey, you feel it, guys. Planned kids, they yeah. they they inherit businesses. Planned kids. Yeah. Planned kids, guys. Now I'm kids. rethinking my entire Bra- existence. So babuza. So figure cleaning Why was I not planned? Was I planned or was I unplanned? But now that I think about it, I feel like I was unplanned. You feel like an unplanned Tell baby. me right now. But, but I feel kids, like I was we'll see as we They, go, they give them their first cars, guys. Imagine like the, the like the, the how like that sets you up, not having to pay for like yeah. uh monthly installment on a car. Yeah. Like because like especially when you go into like uh training years, articles in your articles. Mm. So like as a CA to become a CA you go to articles. <laughs> Bless you. Amen. So in articles, um, we all earn the same salary. So let's say we're all earning that 18K, 19K, right? Um, that's when you see properly see the difference between a blend and an unplanned child. What they and a blend child money, has yeah. to take that 19K, right? Yeah. Pay for it, pay a car, still send money home and take care of themselves. A blend child, the the parents they helped them buy their first car. Yeah. They helped them buy their first car. So it even puts them a step forward in life yeah. in general. Because they don't it's have to true. take on unnecessary debt early on in, the, in, in their lives. It's true. And I think unplanned can, it doesn't necessarily mean that you plan to have the child. Yes. But as soon as you had the child, you, you made plans. plans. Yes. Yeah. You, it's, not, it's not like, yeah. Uh, we planned today we are making yeah. a child, but you plan for your child's yeah. life. You know, plan kids like yeah, yeah. Your savings account when I die when this happens, when my child reaches this point in life. Yeah. But imagine guys, your yeah. parents praying for NSFAS to take you to university and then NSFAS is doing what it's doing now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I think yeah part of the conversation also as as it stands as we are, guys. Be wise in your decision making. Exactly. Please. Now it's for our generation to make smart decisions. Absolutely. That's what I meant. Make smart decisions. Plan for your children's lives if you're going to have them. Yeah. Plan on, guys. Plan on. I beg. Don't put them through all of Have kids you can afford. Please. For the sake of society's sake, have kids you can afford. And if you can't, just move to Thailand or something. It's cheaper to raise kids there. There's that option. Is that option? So yeah. now let's go into, into our longer topic. I'm sure most of you have been waiting for the sun. Yeah, I've been waiting. So deep one, you've been sun. waiting. Yeah, because it's genuine. I feel like this is like, guys, I love opening up. Yeah, like I love being open. We love watching you open up. <laughs> it's very entertaining. So you can judge me. <laughs> no, I haven't judged you. Not one point. Well, except for the time where you paid a thousand eight hundred okay, for yeah. orange I and, blue, judgment and blonde braids. Yeah, but in general, like. I, I, I find it one, there's a deeper respect for you because mm. you've navigated through that part of your life mm. and now you're able to share it in mm. con- with confidence. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? Mm. With a level of trust for me and the audience, mm. vulnerability is actually a form of strength because you're not, you're not um, what is it called? You're not bottling things up. You're not compartmentalizing. That's the word that I was looking for. And so when you're able to be to be vulnerable and transparent about your experiences. Mm -hmm. We are able to see you one for who you are now and to applaud you for the strength that you, that you've garnered throughout the years. And I really should be talking to myself. You have done the most. No, I'm just saying like, I should be as open, but I think I'm learning. You're teaching yes. me. Kangani, kangani. And you're teaching me to be to cleaner. Like, it's so funny. I'm teaching her to the be other soft. Way around, yeah. She's teaching me to 
you know, like yeah, I'm balance is important, man. Sometimes you gotta strong. be a hard nigga. Sometimes you gotta cry. Sometimes you gotta be soft, nigga. So let's talk about body dysmorphia. Yeah. What is body dysmorphia? According to my understanding, body dysmorphia is viewing your body a different way than what it is. Mm-hmm. So it, this, this I think, can also go hand in hand with some mental disorders like um, anorexia, where somebody wants or somebody wants to be a certain weight um, that is incredibly unhealthy realistically, but mm-hmm. to them, it fulfills their their body image, mm-hmm. a body image that they will be satisfied with. I think also it can tie in with just overall dissatisfaction with your body image, the way you see it, even though other people validate what you look like. And I think you know, it's, such, it's such a broad conversation. Body mm-hmm. dysmorphia is such a broad conversation because I thought it was one-sided. I thought... It was just a general unhappiness with how you look, mm. despite what people say. When really, it's it's deeper than that. It's it has a lot to do with. Let me gather my thoughts here. It has a lot to do with, I think, looking in the mirror, mm. and seeing one seeing yourself one way, looking in the camera, seeing yourself another way, and then through people's eyes, mm. another way. Hey, Mus, this is deep, Mus. Very deep. We might cry here. Yeah. I'm just hey, kidding. You never know. Uh, hey, you never know. Have you dealt with body dysmorphia? Uh, all my life. Really? Uh, all my freaking life. Like, people who grew up with me, like, can attest to it because they were my bullies, yeah. some of them. You know, in a sense. Yeah. You know? But, like, all my life. Because one thing about me, I've never been the ideal South African body you know body like type, you know, body see. type you know like a, a small African, ways small ways big, big, big ass big you know boob. sta- big boobs that that's still that's still like a body type yeah. that is a south african that is not yeah. how i am built i'll never be built like that yeah. if y'all see me with a fat ass just know that i went and i, I got in, <laughs> yes and i got in a bbl literally yeah. i'll even tell y'all if i go get one yeah you know so when i grew up i think it started grade five, mm-hmm. grade no, grade six, yes, grade six, grade seven, grade five, yes. Um, that's when I started. That, those are like critical preteen, yes, um, yes, ages, puberty ages, mm. yeah. And it started there because like I was bullied, like like people used to say like the way you can laugh if you want, it's fine. Yeah. Like the way like my back is so flat, it's like an ironing board. I used to hear those. Also. Yes, Your yeah. Kids so were cruel. People used to say that. Yeah. Like I was bullied so badly. Like at home in the complex I grew up in, the people I grew up with you would bully me because of my body. Mm. Um, at school I would further be bullied because of yeah. my body. Yeah. So because of that, I always hated how I looked. Yeah. You know, I always hated how I looked. I always hated my body. Mm. I didn't have a love for my body and yeah, things like that. And then now you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow. When you start to think, okay, now I'm getting to a point where like I'm now comfortable with how my body looks now. Because I think I lost quite a bit of weight in high school. I lost mm-hmm. some weight in high school. And that stemmed because I was not happy with my body. So I, I didn't eat as much. Yeah. So now I'm no longer eating and I'm no longer doing all those things and stuff like that. Then I come to um, university, right? I'm finally at a comfortable level with like how I look and everything like that. I decide to be behind a camera. Mm. I decide to be behind dangerous uh, like a camera, yeah. like the internet yeah. and stuff. Now like my like you know when you finally learned how to handle like bullying from like a like Twenty people. Yeah. Now you have to like scale that thousands, to like thousands, hundreds 60, of thousands, thousands yeah. sixty thousands, two hundred thousands, millions yeah. even of people like talking about how you look. Yeah. And I don't think, um, yeah, Smash or Pass helped. Yeah. Was like the right mode yeah. into getting into behind the camera and stuff, yeah. like, uh, stuff like that. But honestly, with regards to the cast and how it was shot and everything like yeah. that, in that environment, I they felt w- safe. Yes. It was proper. Like, people really deepened more than it actually was. Like, yeah. our, like, special past days was... Clean, mild, guys. Mild, clean, bruh. Like, it was Nobody so pop- shamed each other for anything. Like, literally, it was like that thing of, like, before... Shame. Before someone would even, like, do something crazy or say something crazy, they would literally ask you, are you comfortable with yeah. that? You know, type of thing, you yeah. know? So it was the thing of like, okay, no, that I was fine with. 
Yeah. But then now, like, now I've opened myself up to the comment sections. Yep. I've opened myself up to, like, so many people, like, talking about, like, my body yeah. and things like that and how it looks and whatever. And mind you, when I, when you start, when I started social media, I was, like, what, 18. Mm -hmm. My body is still going to grow. Right. I am still in a form of puberty, in yeah. a sense. I'm becoming a woman. Yeah. You know? So my body is still going to grow. Yeah. But now the problem is with grow, it, with it growing in front of the camera yeah. people expect you to look the same yeah. they expect mpo when she's 18 to look as mpo now when she's 21 mm -hmm. so when i started gaining weight you know and things like that they had something to say about people it had as well. something to say about it as well yeah. you know so it's the thing of like oh when i thought oh i'm comfortable about it and then the internet came and then sure. then you how find, did you deal with that Because it's hard not to read the comments. It's it's really hard not to. Mm. It's really, really hard not to. I feel like it got to the point with regards to like the internet. Yeah. It got to the point where it was like, I don't know you personally. Right. Like, I don't know you personally. I don't know mm. what you look like. You can be, you, you can be a ticolosh. I don't know. Yep. I don't know. Maybe like you going through your own insecurity. Yeah, and you're just projecting. Because like for someone to go crazy on the comment section where they know they are hidden behind a user, user one, two, oh my three, four, guy. five, six, seven, and then you comment something nasty. I don't have respect for you, you know, mm -hmm. because then it uh, it also comes to question like what type of a home and an environment you were raised in. Yeah. So it also I genuinely feel concerned for people like that. So yeah. it had to be it had to come down to like I don't know you. But there was a time I got mad. Mm. And and I didn't address it because I was like, mm, but calm down. It came from someone with a public platform. Okay. You know? And it was not necessarily like that they were talking about my body and my physical image and everything like that. They were commenting on the way I was eating. Mm -hmm. so i was eating in a video and they were literally like making fun of me and like oh she's so hungry mm -hmm. eh, the way she's eating and da, 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 da. and i'm like that's so crazy for you to feel so comfortable to make jokes like that okay, on that. a platform where people can go and feel and add to those jokes not knowing the life i've had to live or the relationship that i've had with food exactly because i i stopped eating at some point in my exactly. life because of the way my body looked yeah and then now you want to take me back to that same point right. in my life yeah where i feel uncomfortable eating my guy and i was like that is crazy mm. like that is so crazy to utilize your platform like that mm. and then i was just like you know some people don't deserve their platform they don't deserve their platforms they don't deserve the responsibility yeah. of being the voice of our youth mm. cuz as soon as you 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 create a name for yourself on social media, please don't ever say that you didn't choose it. You chose it and with, with that choice comes a responsibility. Exactly. You are 100% responsible for the messages that you put out there. Exactly. What you, what you deem, because now it's like, bro, like you literally opened that platform for people to have something to, 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 to say to, to about Something you. to say about me yeah. and the, my weight gain and the, everything like that. You literally open that with your platform yeah and i was like that is nasty that's some nasty business yeah. you know and it really like upset me and hurt me because in that video there Imagine. were people i knew yeah. personally yeah and i was like damn mm. you know so it's a thing of like but i think in life guys at some point was in <laughs> You can't, you can't cry all the time. So it's yeah. a thing of like, I've dealt with this so much that I don't know what you can say about my body that I probably haven't heard before yeah. from someone else. Yeah. So you're not shocking me. You are not creative. Yeah. Actually, you're very redundant. Yeah. So it's a thing of like, I feel like that's what brought me comfort. You know, it's like, it's not you. Yeah. And I know what I look like. Yeah. I see myself every day. Right. I know what I look like. I know what I'm uncomfortable with. I know what I want to work on in the future mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's where I had to get. That's we a long journey. Yeah, very long. That's a very, you started grade five. Grade All five. The way to when you're 21. Now, years it's, now it's only when I'm like, yeah, comfortable again. Yeah. <laughs> again, like now it's like only when I'm comfortable again with my I body. I think for women, it's difficult. I don't know, for men, let us know your experiences mm -hmm. with the body dysmorphia if you've had any. Uh, for women, I think it's incredibly difficult because 
we've got hormones coming into play and these things make our our weight fluctuate i think my experience with body dysmorphia came in recently mm. actually i was i was in a i was in a relationship with somebody who expressed his dissatisfaction with the way that i looked mm. and because i give so much in a relationship you're the center of my universe mm. so what you say matters above everybody Anything else is. and he and he would make remarks like i think you should go to the gym or <laughs> hey hey this bro man would probably be dragging me through the mud <laughs> bro you. and he would like if you if you're not going th- or um before i started going to the gym because i eventually ended up going to the gym because of him yes um before i, I got the membership and stuff he'd be like did you do your squats today how I many did you do or like what are you eating let me see what you're eating that's not enough add more cuz he had a preference for thicker set women mm. right and i don't fit there bro like i'm a, i'm a petite little girl yeah? yeah and god has given me what he's given me yeah Thank god. <laughs> but he was he was very dissatisfied with the way that i looked and he didn't hesitate to let me know and this this came with on top of that he was cheating on me <laughs> with women that he what were what his he type said, yeah. do you know what i'm saying so you can imagine what that did to my mental states that okay if i do as he as he um as he's requesting as he wants and i go to the gym and i eat this much and i take the supplements and i gain this weight then he'll stop cheating on me mm. that was my thought process and that's what i did i went to the gym i gained the weight and i kid you not it was like he still cheated but he, he he then began to compliment me before then i a compliment was a a, a hidden gem it was you know like, what i'm saying it, anytime he said oh you look nice and it would be such a basic compliment like oh you look nice it made my entire week like okay i did that right and i would, and it would probably let's say on the day i'm wearing a particular outfit that i've never worn, worn before i would wear that outfit so often because i would think okay that's what makes it's me really look nice look nice not that i'm nice on my own type beat so the body just moved came even after he left i had to fight to fall in love with mm. what my body looked like and to be god honest there was nothing wrong with my body before 100% it was the person that i was with it was 100%. such a crazy experience and so even now i'm learning to fall in love with my body again and i'm oh, it, even shopping is incredibly difficult because Yo, I get so frustrated when something doesn't fit the way I want it to fit mm. or accentuate the parts that I want it to accentuate or sometimes yo <laughs> exaggerate what I want it to exaggerate. Yeah. Shopping for me is incredibly stressful. Same, yeah. I have so many breakdowns shopping because I Same, like yeah. nothing I don't like nothing's it. fitting the way I want it to fit. I haven't shopped in a very long time. But yeah, that's where my experience with body dysmorphia comes in. When you're speaking very of very late relationships. Yeah. I I once had an ex who told me that if I ever like gained weight to a certain point yeah. he would leave me. And I was like it's so crazy how men are not are you're so very comfortable, comfortable telling me what I can things. and cannot look like. They are so When you don't know I actually settled for you. Let's have that conversation. And it be the ones. It be the ones. It be the ones who you Oh, it be the ones be you the compromised one. for. It be, be, it be the ones you are defending to your friends that have the audacity to tell you what you can and cannot look like. Oh, babe, I don't like your hair. Did you pay for it? Literally, it was everything. He was like, he he was like, he liked me with he liked braids. Yeah. And at the time, it was when I started falling in love with wigs. Yeah. So I stopped my wig journey and went into braids because of this person. Yeah. And it was like thing of like oh he was also like the encouraging yeah. me to like go to the gym yeah. type of person as well because he was also not in yeah. comfortable with my body yeah. the way it looks you know so it's like so many things now that you said I'm like why do we take that yeah, and as women we really do because like, we want to please our partner you know like what I'm it's saying? so crazy and you know like now that I think you know my mom once said like the craziest thing to me when we broke up when mm. me and the guy broke up my mom was like. I I honestly don't know why you dated him mm-hmm. because he had nothing to offer you. 
And if your mom but, saw it, like my mom was like, my your child, mom saw it. The way where you guys are in life, mm. you are here. He mm. was here. Mm. Yes, he has the potential to go far. He's a yeah. good person and everything like that. But the way where you were yeah. and where he was, yeah. you were doing him the favor. Yeah. And I was lost as to why mm-hmm. you, because we don't we don't consider that when our hearts come into play. To be honest, to and the point that we make like the mistake of oh he can be. Focus on who he is, not oh he can be. To the point where we start self hating. Yeah, that is crazy. Why this movie is a hectic chat, guys? That hectic. Is and crazy. I think as a society we have to be mindful. You can't comment on somebody's weight as you please. You can't. Like, you know the people who comment on Kamon Pella's weight? Yeah. Oh, they give me so much. I feel it like breaks my heart so there. much because you don't know what bah, she's going through. You do. don't know, guys. There's so many factors that can contribute to a woman's weight. So many. Going on birth control. Stopping birth control. da 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 this, da 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 that. Yeah. So many things can contribute yeah. to a woman's weight. And then the people to have the audacity to think... That they have the right to make assumptions and to say comment. she's gaining weight because of birth control. Who told you? What if she's de- what if she's depressed and she's overeating? <gasps> oh, what if that's just how her body is supposed what, to be? Exactly. What if she's going into the age where she's she's be, like she's maturing? Yeah, her and body's for maturing. Me, the people who have the need so much to comment on people's bodies, yeah, also tend to be pedophiles. Okay, how did you make that association? Because they will sexualize young girls. I'm struggling to see where the two come in. So it's a thing of like, you know like when you're always commenting on someone's body. Uh-huh. When you see that child there, she's wearing her school uniform and stuff like that, and you're like, yo, ugeni le weidi. Wana marawa ha, yeah. Her boobs, she's probably having sex because her ass is now big. Her uh-huh. boobs are falling and everything like that. It's, it's pedophilic behavior. Because why are you uh, looking at a, at someone's body to that extent? Like, yeah. they literally look at everyone's body. It's true. It's true. They that, that is actually quite sus look, to me. Yeah, they look at everyone's mm. body. They comment on everyone's body. And it can it doesn't even have to be men. Mm. It can even be women who, like, literally scrutinize someone's body mm. to such a point that imagine, like, someone telling you that you can't wear shorts because when, uh, when you wear shorts, it doesn't look the same as when... Yeah. Don't be waist shorts yeah. because you have a bigger ass. Don't be doesn't yeah. have a bigger ass. Why do you guys? My friend said something that was like so wise. But you know how fickle human beings are. Mm-hmm. God gave us bums to sit, mm. and we sexualized them. We don't sexualize a lot of things. We're like, not supposed to sexualize, bra, bro. Like, but men can sexualize anything. Literally, I saw a TikTok. Where the 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 guy was like the husband. It's like back in the day, the old yeah. ages. The husband was like. You are basically naked in this portrait. Uh-huh. And then she's like, all I did was show my ankle. You know, back in the day, showing ankle was showing too much skin. <laughs> uh, I actually know that. Ankle. I know he, I love key thing, yeah. You know, like, in, 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 I don't know whether it's Japan or China, but they, they literally, the nape, your neck was sexualized. <laughs> I swear to you. Swear. Any little body parts, not sexualization. I think also part of the conversation... Let's let's include overcoming the body dysmorphia, oh. right? Um, for me, I think diligence, mm. personal diligence, in re restructuring the way that you think about yourself, you have to be diligent about it because. If you're looking for obstacle, you'll find obstacle. Mm. You know, if you're looking for offense, you'll find offense. And so you need to be committed to redefining yourself mm. by your own standards, by God's standards, if mm. you are spiritual. So I think that's the way, that's, let's, let's say, the, the psychological way to go about it. The practical way to go about it is if there is, if you are able to change what you're not happy with, perhaps you want to gain weight then find practical ways to do so. But healthy make sure it's... Ca- yes, find so. healthy ways to do so. I was about to say, make sure it's coming from a healthy place. Mm. That the reason that you want to gain weight is not because your partner has a preference or your family has this kind of body type or this is the the, the society or so, society's so standard, standard yes. of physical beauty. Make mm. sure it's coming from a personal desire because that's what you want to look like and not what mm. you think other people want you to look like. So if that means going to the gym... 
go to the gym. If I'm 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 a Christian woman, but I'm not against plastic surgery. I'm really not. So if you if you want to get that pla- that that surgical procedure done, do Am it. I, in fact, you must give me your doctor's number. Do it. <laughs> okay, but make sure it's coming from a good place. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think come it coming from within is the most important thing. Yeah. Like it needs to come from you, so that even like for instance, if you want to do plastic surgery, it needs to come from you. Yes. So that even the consequences of it, yes. if there are any. You understand them because yeah. what they it's coming from you, yeah. You know, because there was a lady who literally got plastic surgery for her husband, mm. and then she ended up literally, this lady almost died. Mm. Like, the doctor was like, Hey, prepare sure. your child's funeral things, like yeah. to the mother, yeah, you know, and she did it in the name of a man. So, imagine almost experiencing death. Because of you are not unhappy with your body, mm. but someone, someone else, else yeah. was unhappy with it. Yeah. So please introspect and see, is it me mm. or is it influenced by my surroundings? Mm. You know, when I look at myself, not like when I look at myself and I think, oh, Tabo will like yes. this. Or no, people will like my pictures on Instagram yes. if my waist is more. Right. You need to look and say, are you comfortable mm. are you happy and what is beauty to me exactly what is beautiful for me exactly. if it's not this and it's yeah. this like i think everything just translates into yeah. working within yourself yeah also yeah. practically i think again that's that's psychological or uh what's the mental. word that i'm looking for what? mental um practically also we must consider that there are clothes that are unflattering for certain body yes, types. Yes, 100%. And there are clothes that, that are thing. very flattering for certain body That's types. A, it comes back to the yeah. hairstyle chat. The yes. Chat. That whole chat. You have to look at your your physique now and dress a, accordingly. Yes. I'm not telling you what to wear, but there are things that you will, you will generally not like yourself in. Yes. Not because you are not beautiful, but it's just not your body they type. They don't sit that way on your body. You know what I'm saying? Yes, 100%. For instance, um, shorter people, we can't get away with midi skirts. We will look very weird. Midi skirts are the skirts that, that yeah. end here, right? We will look very weird. We can't get away with that. Um, Thicker said people can't get away with wearing low-rise jeans. Mm. It just doesn't work, right? Um, and and the, the, the inverse is... Oh, um, people with long legs. You guys look great in um, bell bottom jeans. Oh no, we don't rock bell bottoms. Short people, we don't. We can't, legs. Baba. If we wear I bell bottoms, a, we've got to wear heels. Like my mother. Elongate the leg bah. manually. You know what I'm saying? My mother's like, when you wear bell bottom, wear heel. You know what she's like? People with longer legs, you guys look, ex- you look exquisite in formal pants. Yo, you guys look so. <laughs> Some people can't get away with that. Thicker or oh, curvier women look great. In body hugging things, Yo, those body contrasts be doing the most, right? They be doing the right, most. and women who are more slim who don't have as wide hips, you guys look great in those um princess style dresses, yes. like the sun, uh, sun dresses, I think they're yes. called. You guys look exquisite in sun, in thingy, yeah. So, in I think it's like dark skinned women look great in bright colors. Yo, a dark skinned woman with a yellow true. dress. My goodness, right? So it's color, it's cut, it's style. You know what I'm saying? You, it all stems on, like, you know your body. You Like, you know, guys. You just know. look at yourself. All you need is a mirror. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah. But redefine beauty for yourself. 100%. 100%. Thank you, guys. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Very, very... Hey, got very deep at some point. But that's the essence and the end of both night just thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys. You know what to do. You know do. what to do. You must like, you must subscribe, you must comment. And then uh today's uh thingy, what is it that thing called? What? <laughs> so you think this today's is gonna jog my memory? <laughs> no, it's jogging my memory. Today's treat. Remember we leave them like treats and tell them what to comment? Yes. And then the person who comments it uh uh-huh, gets a shout out. He gets a shout out. Uh-huh. So what are we doing for today? Today what are we doing? Um last time it was emojis, purple it emojis, pink or purple? Pink. pink. It, was it was pink cards. Um hmm, what could it be this time? 
How about the butterfly emoji? Yeah, let's do butterflies. That's nice. That actually ties in with the whole body dysmorphia chat. Because, you know, right now you're a caterpillar, but soon you'll be a butterfly. Uh-huh. So let's do... Yeah, this week we're doing the butterfly yeah. emoji. Uh, yeah, we'll shout you guys out all in one. Yep. Very soon. Very soon. Very, very soon. We'll see, you'll see. But I would like to shout out someone. Okay. And this is why I would like to shout them out before okay, we close the okay, video. Okay, okay. I would like to shout out Uno Kolo. Mm-hmm. And this is why. So basically, we're on uh, Tato's mm-hmm. channel, right? Recent, well, seated with, yeah. uh, seated with the Rampedis. Uh, we we're on their podcast recently and then she basically like commented on it okay and i loved how like she literally went into depth okay with like her comments on it so it touched my heart as to like how someone actually watches us with so much intention mm-hmm. and i feel like she deserves a shout out okay so this is what she basically said she's like Watching and she's like watching and listening to the podcast, and I have to say, Ed Mommy Dearest is so smart. I could listen to her speak every day. A relationship take on <laughs> choosing a partner mm-hmm. and submitting, girl. I could listen to you all day. Also, can't wait for Ed Kaya and Mommy Dearest podcast. These two ladies love them. Kaya, a very sweet and very kind in-depth. queen. Uh, the internet is about to shake. Okay. All right. And she went into so much more. She actually yeah. said so much more. Yeah. And I'd like to say thank you guys for the love. Thank, thank you, you guys, guys so much. for the support. We see you. We love y'all. Doses. Oh, you forgot the, the thingy. The cues. Like. <laughs> comment. comment. Share. Subscribe. Post notifications. Season Ivona next week on Monday. Go three. Wash. Ha, <laughs>